Hi, and welcome to day three of Adobe Live. I'm here with Andrew Segretti, and we've been talking about retouching in Photoshop and Lightroom this week. Uh, we've got a full day planned still ahead, so if we want to take a look at the schedule, we've got... We already had Anna with Paul, and after us we've got Sasha, also hosted by Paul. So, yep, we've got a chat and win today, which is a Moo notebook. Boom. <laughs> Moo. There you go. I, was I think I made for that, that joke like three days in a well, row. Well, if you weren't watching, this is all new. So, um, yep. And then we're going to be doing portfolio reviews later, about uh, an hour and a half into the show. So stick around and um, welcome. So, hello. Hello. Let's pretend hello. we've never spoken before. And let's talk about your work real fast. I've got it pulled up here on my computer. Cool. You are a wonderful portrait photographer. Oh, and um, we've been talking a lot about the choices that you make to edit an image. Mm -hmm. So I would love for you to just briefly go over some of these shots. Maybe let's yeah. let's just chat. Up. You know what? Hit me. This is kind of a good segue into what we're doing today, I think, in a way. Uh, that was a test shoot. Yeah. And we were up on my roof. Ooh. And I love shooting directly into the sun. I do too. Yeah. And uh, just kind of like got, you know, like sh shot a million frames of the sun bursting from behind her, her uh, shoulder or over her shoulders. And that one was just like a powerful image. That's gorgeous. I really love that one. I love it. Yeah. Ugh. And for all of you on Instagram, I've got his Instagram up too. I'm clearly following it. Yeah. As you can see. Follow Instagram. But check him out. Post great work. Huge fan. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So this week we've talked, what have we talked about? Oh, we talked a lot about um, retouching photos in Photoshop. Yes. Which we'll go over more today in a kind of a different way. Okay. Or a little bit more polished way, I feel like. Perfect. Um, so we went over like retouching like my personal work. Right. Which I kind of keep like rugged and raw. Mm hmm And then we went through how I finish up in Lightroom on the second day. Correct. And then we went over like um, street stuff and mm -hmm, making mm -hmm. cohesive work across many years of shooting um, with Lightroom and Photoshop. Beautiful. Yeah. So check them out. Um, we've got them ready for you to replay at any time. So, But today we are going to be talking about polishing up more lifestyle, e-commerce work, Things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How does this differ from maybe what we were talking about earlier? First day was more of like a creative shoot where maybe it didn't need to be a specific way across the board, but you still wanted to, to feel cohesive. And then day two was still like rugged and raw. This is kind of like technical, nitty gritty. Yeah. Into there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is going to be like me working for somebody else. Yep. And getting what the assets that they need to sell clothing online mm -hmm. and like lifestyle stuff to like kind of sell their brand. Yeah. So uh, whereas like the stuff that we were showing the last two days was stuff that's like just my work. Like I just like, you know, totally personal. Like I, every detail is all about my preferences. Right. And this is about my work filtered through somebody else's preferences. Totally. And um, yeah, how to like kind of like polish something up a little bit further than like I would polish up my own yeah. portrait. Well, I think this is super helpful. So we're going to be editing some images from the ground up, actually. Yeah. Um, also, someone mentioned that we are matching. So mm. Eduardo says your black and white photos are amazing. Thanks, Eduardo. Yeah, right? Appreciate that. Cool. And we are matching. We are matching. I don't know if we planned it or not. I don't know either. I don't remember. Don't quite remember. <laughs> Um, check this photo out. Check this t-shirt out. Yay. This guy's too sexy for his cat. Too I don't know how you guys feel, but... Too sexy. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was um, um, an e-com kind of lifestyle shoot for a brand called uh, Trouble Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they make t-shirts, like, most specifically, they make these kind of t-shirts where they're, like, you know, kind of, like edgier, oop, that one's, Hello. there we go. Edgier kind of vibes um, for, you know, 
for kids. Very cool. Um, so we did uh, two portions of the shoot. Ecom stuff, like really clean stuff <clears throat> against um, just on a white backdrop. Mm -hmm. And then we went outside <clears throat> and did like lifestyle stuff. Nice. And we did some lifestyle stuff in, in the studio as well. But this shoot, this actually, what we're looking at here was actually two different brands that got merged into one brand after the shoot. So as you can see, like this image was shot a little different than this image. And it's pretty subtle, but this image is all strobes mm -hmm. in indoors, and this image is just natural light indoors. Oh, wow. And it's got kind of a different color temperature and a different feel to it. But they merged these into one brand. Very um, cool. But we shot them very specifically to have different kind of aesthetic. Oh, I see. Um, Mickey says he was my roommate in college. Who is that was? true? Not me. Sexy cat guy? Weird. Yeah, hit us up. Was this guy your roommate in college? Mickey, tell us more. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like we can work through like how to retouch something like this. Yeah. To like polish it way up and like get it like super clean. Right. For... And I think this week we've shown uh, maybe your final and then worked our way through them. But you're going to yeah. do from the ground up maybe some choices. Without. Yeah, I'm gonna explain everything. So yeah. let's open this one up. Control E to open from Lightroom. Lightroom, and there actually might be <clears throat> this might be a worked up image, but I'll just delete everything. So again, Command E to open from Lightroom to Photoshop. Oh yes, and also I selected to open up um, without the original. yeah the original file without the Lightroom preferences. Yep. And yesterday you chose to open the one with some edits, right? Yeah, they went to St. Mary's. Yeah! Haha, <laughs> that's so weird. Tell him what up. Yeah, tell him you saw him He's on, on the internet. Tutorial <laughs> that he was in. All right, so <laughs> let's get rid of all this sort of stuff. I'm gonna delete all of this. Just drag it to the trash can. All right, so we're starting from background layer. Perfect. This is what I shot. Beautiful. So first thing I'm gonna do is Control J to duplicate the background, um, so I can start clean up. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna zoom into his face with Command Plus, and hold the Shift key to. Uh, I mean, sorry, hold the Spacebar key to pull the image around to his face. So I'm gonna clean that up first. And I always kind of, st I always start with um, the spot healing tool, and that's just gonna hit J for the quick key for that guy. Ooh. And J will bring up any one of these. It depends on what you have selected because I use the patch tool too. Okay. Um, but I always just make sure that like I start here. And I'm just gonna kinda like move around. Yeah, go I'm gonna I usually I try to start in one area and just keep it until that until this area is clean. Like I'll just work on this area until it's clean and then I'll move around because I found in the past I was like just jumping around everywhere, like noticing different things. And it just like got really distracting. Right. So I just kind of like work on one area. So when you're shooting, maybe I would call the, maybe you could say it's standard e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you shoot it to then inform the way you edit it? Or is it mm. based on a reference and then you talk about how you want to edit it? Yeah. <clears throat> so for this one, we wanted to go like this brand was called Stolen Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they wanted it to be like light and airy and like very lit. And then the other one was that is Trouble Muffin, which they like combined both of them into. Trouble Muffin was um, supposed to be like more edgy and like kind of like natural light and a little grittier. Yeah. Although both of them needed to be ecom, right. so they both needed to kind of have like to be, you know, brighter. Totally. Than to see the clothing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, this was like, you know, something that we had talked about beforehand, and like when we were talking about it, I thought about like how I would light it and how it would be shot, nice. and then like how I would retouch it afterwards. Very cool. And in terms of making the background white, do you end up working on that in post more or do you try to light it as white as you can? I mean, yeah, I try to light it as white as I can in um, in the shot, but I will inevitably like select him out and kind of like push yeah. the background a little bit just to clean it up, like make sure it's like even cool. in case there was any sort of like vignette or something um, after the shoot. Yeah. Christina says, I like to throw a black and white adjustment layer over the raw photo when I do skin top chip. I've definitely heard 
oh, about like you, that before. To, sh to edit it in black and white yeah, so you can so just you see just the contrast? See, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Stuart wants to know what camera do you use? Oh, just everybody's camera. <laughs> Canon 5D Mark III. <laughs> it's a great camera. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Christina, that's a great idea. I've definitely tried that before. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I want to try that on my own time some at some point. Yeah, and then you can think about the color and if their skin has some sort of color variation that needs help after that. Yeah, too. after that. Yeah, that makes sense. So you can be a little bit more concise with it. All right, so I'm going to start with just like basic cleanup, and I'm going to keep my fingers on the bracket tool to make this small or larger as needed. So J sure. is to pull up that dialog with some sort of healing brush, and then bracket tools to make the brush bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. There you go. And I'll also toggle sometimes between using the spot healing tool and the um, patch tool. Because like, as you can see, this area right here that I just did the spot healing tool is kind of like, it like flattened it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'll just do something like this to bring a little texture back. Even though like, that's so, I mean, we're at 300% right now and like, there's no way anybody's gonna see that. Right. But that's just kind of like <clears throat> my own preferences. So no matter what shoot it is, unless it's your street photography, you are doing a cleanup layer first. Yeah. Always. Definitely. Yeah. Perfect. For sure. And I'm just gonna like kind of like go over everything and just kind of get rid of things that are a little distracting. Um, and then I can like, zoom out sometimes. Just to check. Just to see what's going on. Like see how much I actually need to. Usually tend to just stay at 200%. But nice. like, some of those details look like they needed to be a little bit more accurate. So we go into 300. Uh, Narcissa wants to know what kind of lenses do you like to work with? I only have a 24 to 105 right now, which is getting very soft actually. <laughs> I need to bring it into repair. We've been talking about that. Yeah, and I need to, uh, invest in some prime lenses because I really want a bunch of prime lenses. Oh my gosh, they're the best. Yeah, I want like a 50, an 85, uh -huh. 100, and then I want a 70 to 200. <sighs> yeah. He wants it all, yeah. everybody. And I want my 24 to 105 fixed. <laughs> well, if anyone wants to come here after this and yeah. fix your 24 to 105. Totally, or just like bring me all those lenses because <laughs> that'd be cool too. <laughs> Take all that. Totally, but I also think there's some merit in using what you have too. So I think that's pretty cool that you're able to do so much with just one lens. Well, the 24 to 105 is a super versatile lens. Yeah. So, you know, you can get a lot of work done with it. However, like I said, I've had it for a long time and there's definitely a few focal lengths that are... Soft. Yeah, like it's getting softer and softer because I've, I've been looking into it quite a bit and like asking about it and apparently there's like a lot of plastic parts in there that get um, just a little out of whack as you use it. Because mm. because it's a zoom lens, you're like constantly moving it in and out. And there's so many moving parts, it can like really like get out of whack. Yeah. You need to bring it in to get it serviced. If you had your pick of the litter to shoot Ecom, what lens would you typically choose? Uh, I guess probably like, probably the 24 to 105. Just so you can get anything. It's like versatile. Totally. Yeah. I've been on a lot of like I've assisted in the past a lot of ecom shoots, and we always used that because it was just like easy. Yeah. I've seen people use fast. the seventy to two hundred too, just yeah. to make that background even mm -hmm. farther away. Or if there was enough room, they would do like an eighty-five prime. Mm-hmm. That's the one lens I want. Yeah, that's a nice one. Prime lenses. Gotta get them. So when you're looking about this cleanup layer, um, it's really just about things on the face that you'd want to take away, not necessarily yeah. shine. Right. Is that a, that's I'll, a different? I'll probably get into the sh the shine on his face after this. This is just stuff that I find like distracting, and I'm really like because this is going to be ecom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like really cleaning up a lot more than I would clean up like in my own portrait. In my own portrait, like I want to keep as much of like the personality mm -hmm. of, you know, like little like imperfections as possible. As long as they're not totally distracting and then you just like look at that first, unless that's what you, you know, like I want right. to look at. 
But since this is e-com, I'm gonna like clean up his face a lot so that, you know, when you click on, click through like a website, you're not like, oh, what, that guy's face is, like, <laughs> is distracting me or whatever. Like right. it's you gonna be about the clothes, the clothes. yeah. yeah. Um, someone has the 24 to 105 Sigma for their Nikon and love it. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Narcissa asked, what about the popular 24 to 70? 24 to 70 is great too, I would have that. But I, I've got that one. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually having a similar problem. So it was getting soft. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. It's a workhorse. Um, I've got it in my bag underneath this table right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ever too far away from no. me. Yeah. Um, I got the 24 to 105 just because I like long lenses. And that was like as long as you could get for it with a zoom lens or with the zoom lens that was like, you know, would go would open up to like a wider angle right. as well. No, it's great. They're both great. Yeah, definitely. At this point in the retouching phase, do you work on the clothes at all or is that separate? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, I I think that we've chosen good shots to use yeah. for the for the um uh selections. But if there was like I think there were a few other images. Let me see. Let's just bounce back into the Lightroom real quick. Cuz I remember like I think this one. Yeah, this one had like a big fold in her shirt right here. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if I could, let's just open it up real quick. Let's see how I tackled that. But that's also something to consider when oh, choosing your selects yeah. and editing and. Look at that. Like, Does everyone see that? That's super distracting. So it just kind of smooth it out. I'm still working on this one. This, like, as you can see, I'm not even through cleanup. Right on uh, this image but there also need to be able to use this this is a so we shot a lot of blank shirts because they're gonna put like new designs on the shirts oh wow um in post later and they needed to be like really cleaned up and you know that was part of it this one's not done yet but that's definitely something that goes into yeah. the cleanup layer let's let's zoom in and just check that out oh actually. yeah sure so it's important to have it being as flat as possible so that the designs can be helpful later. Yeah. Wow. Look at that cleanup, guys. <laughs> I think it still needs some work like in here. Someone said, are you using a mouse or a digitizer for these touch-ups? I'm using a Wacom tablet, yeah. which I think is like essential piece of photographic equipment. And you've got a nice handy one that's mobile for everywhere. Yeah, this is like the cheapest one they make. It's great. Yeah. It's like I can throw it in my bag. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I mean, there are, the ones above it are a little bit more sensitive, which would be nice to have, but uh, everything that I need to do, I can do with this. Yeah, I think it's really helpful. And then you can, you can change how the pen interacts with your brush strokes as well, rather than the mouse. Yeah, I mean, I, when I first started retouching my own images, I was doing it with a mouse and it was, <laughs> man, it was a pain. It'll change your life. Yeah, like once I got used to the Wacom tablet, which takes like a few weeks, or took me a few weeks, like um, it was like a whole new world. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to this. So again, we're using the healing brush. You can use yeah. a number of things on this layer. So you love the patch tool. There's two different kinds of healing brushes. Mm -hmm. um, I usually stick to this one though, the, the spot healing. Spot? Yeah, just because I like the way it works and it does like, it's a little less involves like you don't have to choose a spot um but i like it i just stick to it do you know which uh someone is asking about which wacom this is is it the bamboo or yeah intuos? i think it was the bam oh what was the other choice intuos it was the intuos yeah yeah that's what it was i think the bamboo was earlier yeah i believe so yeah, and this um tim wants to know would you remove skin glare like the tiny one on the nose with the healing brush that's uh, my question is, do you do that kind of stuff in the cleanup? Yeah, I mean, if um, you don't want it. I, I'm going to go over some areas like after I've gotten like the smaller blemishes out, I'm going to switch over to the patch tool and I'm going to take care of like the stuff under the eyes and then I'll work on this right here. Mm -hmm. This will probably be like um, an adjustment layer later. And then I'm gonna use the <clears throat> patch tool to like clean up some of the bigger blemishes. Cause like if I do a move like this with the spot healing tool, like it can tend to flatten it out or like bring in like duplicate, like kind of um, patterns in there and just like look really obvious. 
This was going to be my next question, but Studio C said, have you tried frequency separation? I was wondering if you would do that kind of glare in a frequency separation. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to do frequency separation on this on this image. And we learned about that in our first live stream. Yes. So you can check that out. But he's made an action that we'll hopefully use. I think it's so powerful. So. Yeah, definitely. And so from after the face is like mostly touched up, I'm going to go through and just kind of like check out like the rest of the image. Like I start with looking at the skin, like will you come back and use the patch tool to get that out mm -hmm. there? And there's one on the other hand too. And like this little spot here, and like this is good with the spot healing tool. So things that are a little bit bigger, you might use the patch tool. Yeah, just because I find it makes everything look a little bit more like believable. Like you don't see it as yeah. much. And then I'll zoom out and like take a look at the clothes, see if there's like anything on there. His clothes are pretty clean, which is nice. Sometimes people make your job easy. Yeah, yeah. See, there's this little spot that's like I need to clean my lens, my camera. I mean, my sensor. That's a sensor uh, spot really? right there. Yeah, it's like some dust on my sensor. Ooh. Uh oh. And I'll check the whole background too, especially if it's white. Totally. So this time, this layer is all about removing, mm -hmm. not adding, completely removing things. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So let's Clean up. switch over to the patch tool. Great. And I saw some stuff on his hands that I want to get rid of. It looks like he like burned himself or cut himself on accident, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, the patch tool is cool. That's a personal question. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> it brings, like, watch, you can watch the patch tool, like, as you're doing it. Because it's going to bring in texture. Yeah. And, like, I think that's the most powerful thing about the patch tool is that it retains the texture of the skin and it doesn't look quite as, like, edited. Whereas, right. like, sometimes the clone stamp might. Clone stamp could, like, smooth out areas too much. Right. Ryan says, what if you use the camera raw spot removal tool? I've actually never done that. Yeah, I don't really work in camera raw all that much. Everything that I do before I open it in Photoshop is either in Lightroom or before I even make the Photoshop files in Capture One, which is probably about the same. Yeah. Like if you open a raw file in uh, camera raw, like you can make all the same adjustments that you can in right. And it's, it's still non-destructive. You can always go back to the camera raw mm -hmm. layer, or you can go back to this cleanup layer as yeah. well. So I think it's just based on how you want to approach. Yeah, it's like what you know and what you're comfortable with, and like yeah. how you figure out your process. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the face. Hello, face. Hello. Do you remember his name, Mickey? If you're still watching, what is yeah, his name? Yeah, hit me up because I don't off the top of my head. <laughs> And that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's watching now. And I'm just going to kind of get rid of this. Or not kind of. I'm going to totally get rid of this. <laughs> no kind of about it. Nope. We're getting rid of it. Easy. Yeah, I kind of click a little too fast. That's why I keep getting that dialog box because it's like... It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Since sensor spots are in the same spot on every image, you can just apply, apply the same healing preset on all of them. You could, but I crop into my images sometimes. So oh. I often do, and I crop into them in different ways because the aspect ratio of my camera sensor and what I like to uh, as a photograph are different. Interesting. Someone asked what the cat's name was, and then Tim said Trey. Yeah. That seems about right. Yeah, that's about right. That sounds yeah. good. So you're clicking too fast again. And that's just happening because like I'm clicking and it's not selecting any. I can't right. make. Can I make it happen? Yeah, like yep. that. Like I would no pixels were selected because like you didn't I didn't actually, actually connect anything. And something I don't know about you, but I'm very particular about the under eye because I understand that you know I'll have clients that say take the bags out, but yeah, then yeah. you really still need your eyeball has. Yeah, yeah, it's important to have some shape under there. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it just looks totally weird. I remember one time I was, uh, when I was assisting, we did a corporate head shop job mm -hmm. and it was like all these older guys and the photographer had me like really retouch them a lot and we got notes back from the design agency that was like, we need to like bring back <laughs> some of their uh, age. Right. So sometimes like we go too far. Yeah. It can very quickly go too far. Oh. What? Oh, Tim says that Trey is the name of the handsome fella. Oh, yeah, Trey. That's right. Yeah. Wait, what? 
This guy. How do you know? Or, well, how do you know, remember. Tim? Yeah, how does he know? Tell me everything. Hi, Anel. I love when people say hi. Hello. I feel like I'm in a real life AOL chat room sometimes. <laughs> That's kind of what this is, isn't it? <laughs> so again, we're still in cleanup. Um, we're using a number of tools to accomplish this. It's pretty mm -hmm. great. It must feel so good. Mm -hmm. It's like Marie Kondo. Now I'm Marie Kondoing this photograph. Yeah. Yeah. What doesn't spark joy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hi, Robert. Oh my gosh. So many people saying hi. Oh, what? See, sometimes the patch tool does weird stuff like that and you just gotta keep keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna deselect and then I'm gonna go back. There you go. Command Z that stuff, because that was a weird move that it made. Let's try it over here. Yeah, it looks all right. Can we toggle on and off yeah, this layer just, just to see what's going on? Yeah, I was just about to do that, so. I'm curious to see what happens. That's gonna be like the next move. Yeah. Hello, retouching. Yeah. So I think that cleanup on this image is pretty good right now. And to toggle on and off again, it's command, command comma. comma. Yeah. And it, I think it's great to zoom in, zoom out, mm -hmm. see what you see. Mm -hmm. And this is how people are going to interact with the actual image. So yeah, it'll probably be about this size on the internet, if not smaller, maybe even. Okay, so um, the next step that I'm going to do is to kind of like polish up the face even more because it's going to be like more of a commercial image. Um, I'm going to use my actions to create the frequency separation layers. Nice. Personal question. Mm. Let's just say your beard doesn't grow all the way, maybe mm -hmm. like him. Would you ever add beard hair? I mean, I never have done that, but I suppose if a client wanted me to do that, I could get into that and try mm. to make it look as natural as possible. But um, not typically. Yeah, it's not, not something a, that I. Not a normal done. note. Like, can you add more beard hair? Uh, I had a roommate who was like a hardcore retoucher, and sh the stories and images she would show me and the things that people asked her to do were pretty wild. She had to retouch out someone's full sleeve <gasps> tattoos on both arms and make it look like clean skin. What? Yeah, she was not very happy about that. I wouldn't be either. Um, so. I'm gonna go to my actions. I'm hitting frequency separation. We went over both frequency separation and actions over the last two days. Right. So you can go rewatch those. Also, there's tons of great stuff on the internet Amazing about things. that. But if you had to explain really briefly what those two layers are doing and what we're going to, uh, how we're gonna approach each layer, maybe we can just like do a refresher on that. Yeah, so basically you're making two layers that's gonna separate out um, the color from the texture and the blur what I've what I've named my Layers is blur and texture. You could name it color and texture or high frequency and low frequency some people Ooh, do Okay, um, but I just like got used to blur and texture because the blur layer you blur right you blur even more Yeah, and then the texture layer is the texture. So cool. that's just kind of how I remember it So create an action. It's really easy look up how to do it and uh start on the blur layer. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I'm gonna zoom in a little further. Command plus. I'm gonna select the lasso tool with L, hotkey. And on the blur layer, I'm gonna select portions of his face just to like smooth out. I mean, this guy's got great skin, totally. so he doesn't really need much, but. Eduardo wants to know, most of the times you have to change the pattern of the shirt for e-commerce. How would you do that? Oh, you know, I didn't actually do that in this um, job that because they didn't know what the shoot, the sh uh, new shirts were going to be. Right. So um, basically we just shot a bunch of blank shirts and then like They'll add over the year they were like coming up with different designs. They added it themselves. But if they wanted, like, if it was my job to do that, I could just, like, bring in their design and, like, blend mode it in. Totally. And maybe, like, warp it so it looked like it was, like, actually on the shirt. Yeah. I think it would be pretty simple to do something like that. Totally. Is it time to chat and win? Mm -hmm. <gasps> it's time! Hey. Chat, chat, chat! Time to chat and win! <laughs> <laughs> Chat and win. 
Which I had to hand win. <laughs> Everyone tell us nice things. Send us Girl Scout cookies to the Adobe Live office. Hi, Steven. Hi, Jackie. Paul, yes. Thanks, Steven. Said great job, guys. Hi, Nathaniel. Claire says won't win. What? Mm, you never know. Don't talk like that. You never know. You never know. You know, one time I won a moon notebook. <laughs> did then, you? No. Oh, wow. Okay. I did win tickets for a concert on the radio when I was a kid. That's exciting. Yeah, it was. Uh, Who'd you see? Pretty Spears? No, it was Lauren Hill. Oh, that's way better. Hi, Kirk. Nicholas, you won. You won this. Well, I guess you get to pick. But congratulations. These are great. Yeah, it looks cool. I feel like I could write all my hopes and dreams. You should. I might just steal this, guys. Look, there's a pink part. <laughs> cool. Good job, everybody. Super cool. Great job on winning your moon notebook, honey. All right, here we go. Yeah, continuing on with frequency separation. So we did a cleanup layer, and now we're doing frequency separation, which is even further retouching the skin color and texture, and you're able to separate both. Yeah, and I'm just gonna go through and select different portions to do the blur first. Yep, and I think that using this is also kind of falls into your own workflow, which is making small choices. Rather than mm -hmm. doing like a blanket big retouch, mm -hmm. you're actually getting into the one part versus the other. Mm -hmm. So small, subtle choices mm -hmm. I think is the name of the game. Definitely. And you know, I'm thinking about how I could make a hotkey for the Gaussian blur. Ooh. Because I tend to do this the same one. Fair amount, yeah. We also talked about hotkeys. Hotkeys are super fun and super handy. Robert is asking about the diagonal line on the left side of his hair. Is it this right here? Oh yeah. What is that? You know it's funny, I didn't notice that. Oh, I think it's a bobby pin. Oh. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Great call. Yeah. I didn't, how did I miss that? Does he, I wonder if he even knew he had a bobby pin in his hair. Probably that not. happens to me a lot, actually. I'll, I'll be in the shower and there will be bobby pins everywhere. So to attack that, I would start, actually I would go for the stamp tool to get that out of there. And I would... Zoom in a bunch. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can zoom in even further. Well, my eyesight's not so good, so... Oh, these old eyes of mine. <laughs> I've been retouching. <laughs> At 3,000%? <laughs> Command, shift, F for repeating Gaussian blur. Command, shift, F? Yeah. Aw, someone gave me a compliment. Aww. Thank you. So Command, nice. shift, F. All right, let's try that in a second. All right, we're going to try it live. You know, here's a, a good learning uh, lesson, even for myself, is uh, I'm gonna have to redo the frequency separation now. Because point. of this? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Because it's gonna have. It's we'll, gonna let's have. Let's look at it. Okay. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, and this happens to me fairly often, where I like have to go back. Yeah, I, like noticed something that I didn't get after I've already like created my frequency separation layers. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. So, gone. No more bobby pin. Whoa! Boom. And like, I feel like I'm in Wayne's World right perfect, now. It's not perfect, but like, let's see now. Bobby pin's gone. Is there any other bobby pin? <laughs> like, I just like didn't see it. It was like the same color as his hair. Totally. That was a great catch. And you know, if I was doing this like on my own, I probably would, maybe would have caught that. Um, but we've gone over all this stuff it's very slowly. Yeah. No, it looks so good. It looks so good. So if you have to go back when you want to toggle on frequency separation, what's going to happen? Well, let's see, because it should pop back in. Yeah. yeah. See, because I just duplicated the the clean layer mm. to make that. So unfortunately, and the lesson learned, keep looking at your images and go over every inch. I have to delete that. 
Oh, and so sad. I, but luckily I didn't do all that much. And now we can do the hotkey command, what was it? Command shift F. Command shift F, we can try that. Let's try it. Okay, so uh, action, frequency separation. Uh, we're not backing up at this point because <laughs> I don't want to clean up anymore. <laughs> um, and also, you've created your actions and organized them in the order that you usually use them, which yeah. is also, I think, great, mm -hmm. great point. Super helpful. I mean, at a certain point, you just like won't forget, or you'll be looking at it and you're like, oh, I don't need to do frequency separation on this image. There you go. Um, okay, so we're on the blur layer. I'm going to select the lasso tool with L. I'm gonna get a little portion. What was it? Command Shift F. Someone said po Tim says possibly without Shift on a Mac. Is so it just oh, it's command, command F? F? No. It might be uh, that somebody. Okay, let's try Command Shift F. That's nothing. Mm. But we could turn that into something if we want to do that. Totally. Let's do that. So I'm gonna go to Edit. I'm gonna go to Keyboard Shortcuts. I'm gonna look for where is it on it's under filter mm -hmm. blur blur Gaussian blur let's try command shift F oh boom accepted right off the Woo! bat awesome so now I have that as my hotkey and that's like a super fun thing to do now I have to do that yeah so I'm gonna go do that on my desktop I think we should all well. start a revolution command shift F hot for key revolution. Hot key. hashtag hotkey revolution <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so now you're doing your selection, and instead of saying like yes, 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 you're just doing Command Shift F. Yeah, this is great. Guys, this I, is great. I, it's so funny. It's like I will put off making a hotkey for such a long time, and then I'm you're like, on Adobe Live. Yeah, and then you're like, oh. I guess I have to now. Let's make myself look a little bit more respectable. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about the radius you're selecting for. Oh yeah. Gaussian blur. So like, um, this is like. Okay, yeah. How are you deciding? Uh, I, I will adjust this to the point where it starts to smooth out the color of the background. And if you go too far, you can see. Uh -huh. Like it is definitely blurred way too much. And then you can just pull it back to like where it looks good. Perfect. And I was like probably right about that. And every time you repeat this, it'll go back to that same radius. Yeah, watch. I think I want to do like right here. 6.4. Mm -hmm. Magic number, guys. It's a magic number. <laughs> <laughs> you have 50 minutes to submit your portfolio for review by these lovely people right here. So You must submit your portfolio. <laughs> um, Tato is asking if you can zoom in a little bit so you can see the changes. Yeah, sure. I will do that. Let me just do this one. Okay, let's let's toggle. Let's toggle, guys. So in order to see the frequency separation differences, I'm going to have to collect, uh, click the um, the group mm -hmm. or the folder, and then command um, comma to see. See? Smooth it out just a little bit. Tiny. tiny go tiny go tiny like bit. zoom in here. Yeah, sure. And zoom in on That's the That's killer. Watch that. Ooh. And you can go further with this. Like if you really want to like polish something up, this is where you do it. Like if I really wanted to like get the this like super clean like super duper commercial Which I don't think this client it doesn't call for it, mm -hmm. but like you could go even farther Yeah, I could go in here onto this blur layer and select my brush and Do I have my caps lock on? No, ah there it is. So it just had a really big brush <laughs> um, Select my brush like this little area. That's mm -hmm. got a little bit of like darker tone to it. Yep. Hit Alt or Option, or um, sorry, Alt Option or whatever, and select your color that you want to paint in. Yep. And uh, I have my flow at two, just to keep things like really slow going. And then I would just kind of like paint that in. Right, and I think that's the the biggest success with this with frequency separation is if you have variation in the skin color, it's really easy mm -hmm. once you've done this to then work on it a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit more even. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of keep selecting colors because no one's skin is actually, you know, like one shade. No. And it also depends on like how the light hit it too. Mm -hmm. But that this would be how you like keep dialing in um, the frequency separation. See? So you can see, see that? that thing 
pops away real quick and it's like a really nice tone. You can even go into here. You're a genius. Brilliant. Mm, yes. So I've got to go back to blur. And just kind of, you know. And again, it's here. very subtle and that's why you have the flow down. You just want to yeah. make sure it's. I don't want to like make big changes because you'll end up, you know, like kind of destroying your image. I think we've all, we've all just tried to take it to the nth degree mm -hmm. and then maybe even if it's for fun and yeah. just see what happens. But. It's very easy for that to happen. <laughs> Mikhail wants to know if you will buy a MacBook 2018. <laughs> <laughs> you could send that. You don't like my it. MacBook 2011? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> That's a great computer. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> uh, yeah, someday. <laughs> You could you could buy it for us. Yeah, I love that too. And I'm and saying you us. You can drop but... them off with those lenses. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, whoops! I'm doing this wrong. Tim said you could paint on a new layer. Yes. Yeah, you can you do totally that too. Can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And see this stuff right here? Like I could paint it in, or I could like even blur it out even further, like certain small stuff like that. Alberto's like 2011. Geez. Yeah, I know. man. Look. Doing it. He's OG. I'm a rebel. Truly. <laughs> it's working fine. Yeah, it it's only great. like sounds like it's taking off every like 35 minutes. It does not. It does. But mine mine does that too. Sometimes. Um I clean it a lot. I restore it a lot. Oh, that's good. I don't want to buy a new computer yet. I will have to soon. <laughs> but I'll cross that bridge when I have to. Okay, so we're still in the blur layer. Yeah, we're still You're... in the blur layer. I think we're good on cleaning up like color. Someone pointed out the catch light, and I think that's awesome. Do they like it? About, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talked lights. about it earlier. Catch lights are good. I like catch lights. Okay, so let's deal with the texture a little bit. And for texture, I'm going to use stamp tool. Mm hmm. And, and for texture, what are you looking at? You're looking at places that maybe you don't like the texture and you want to change anything, it? Yeah, that's distracting. Okay. Like, I mean, there's not much to to change for the for his his face in terms of texture. But um, you know, as you zoom in, you can always find some stuff to I'm clean thinking up. just like right up there in the forehead, just a tiny bit. Yeah, so let's just get rid of that. Um and I'm going to select a clean area of texture. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna get rid of this in here. Do it, honey. Don did it. And again, this doesn't change the color underneath. This is just texture. Right. Which if you don't do frequency separation and you try to do this, it will change It'll change a color, lot. yeah, definitely. So I think it's really good to separate those. And like you can even get into like, I saw something on his lip that I wanted to take care of. No, there's this like little thing. Mm. Should be able to lunch. Take care of that. Yeah, maybe Just that's a color thing. Leftover oh, lunch. there we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, do you ever, are you ever in a layer where you realize it's, it should be on the other layer that you're working? <laughs> yeah, all the you're time. Like, oh, this is actually <laughs> a color thing versus a texture. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you'll know pretty quickly yeah. if it's not working. Touching up lips gets like really tricky sometimes, especially if somebody had like really chapped lips. Like I've gotten through shoots and like gone to retouch and realized that somebody's lips were like so incredibly chapped. <laughs> and that's like, when you oh, send them man. one in the mail. Yeah, right. Uh, Narcissa asks, what lights do you use in the studio? Uh, this one, this shoot was a rental. Mm -hmm. I used uh, Profoto 8A and I used, um, a big octabank um, directly onto the subject for key light, and then I shot a light into the ceiling. Nice. Just to bring up the ambient. Beautiful. Yeah. And were they close to the background or far away? Um, they were probably like six feet from the background. Nice. Yeah. So those are expensive, but a good rental to, yeah. to look into. Yeah, definitely. And like, honestly, you could do that with any light as long as it's, you know, a strobe or a, a speed light. Yeah. Bouncing light into the ceilings is is great. Or so now great. you're you're doing some things that would you ever do that back in the cleanup layer? Yeah, you could do this in the cleanup layer. Sometimes like uh, 
it's, I guess it didn't really escape me. Like I saw this stuff, but I'm just like continuing to clean. Very nice. A little bit. Like skin looks great now. It looks, looks like a commercial, which makes everyone feel lovely. Beautiful. So again, you're going around with the clone stamp on texture. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. use any other tools on texture? I usually don't. Yeah. I want to make sure it retains texture. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I am like managing the skin texture. Right, and the clone stamp is great for choosing one area and then replacing that texture. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great choice. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. How do we feel? I feel like, well, let's talk. Any questions? What hardness are you using on the stamp tool? Ooh, good question. Oh, yeah, good question. Thanks, so, Joaquin. Stamp tool is set to 100% uh, opacity uh -huh. and 100% flow, and I have the hardness at 0%. And there are times to change that, but usually I have it set at 0%. Okay. Just go so it's like as fuzzy as possible. Totally. Perfect. We're still talking about computers over here, too. It's oh. great. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. Ryan re is requesting that you make Kylie Jenner lips. That's uh, mm -hmm. next week's live stream. Oh, like I actually like puff his lips <laughs> up? Don't do no, it. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, all right, then. Uh, let's, skin looks great. Yeah, skin looks great. So I'm going to do the first sharpening, which is an action that I have set, and it's going to use the unsharpened mask. And then I went all over that. Um, was it yesterday or the day before? First day. First day, yeah. And can you explain why you chose to do your first sharpen with the unsharp mask? I just like the way it sharpens. Uh, and I like the difference between the final sharpen later. Nice. So as I said, um, I add in, or as I've said in the last few um, sessions, I add in sharpening like slowly throughout the image. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna dial back this opacity, which could be part of my action, but every image kind of requires like a different level. Totally. And I wanna be able to like have some control over it. I mean, you can change the opacity whenever you want, but I figure if I'm gonna change it anyway, like why make it part of the action? Totally. So I feel like since this is like a little bit more commercial. I'm gonna sharpen a little bit more than I would like my own work, which is like usually super right. not sharpened. And then you can see the texture of the shirt and maybe how they printed it and yeah. things like that. Definitely. Um, so first sharpening is done and then I'm gonna hit burn and dodge as the next action. And I'm gonna get into burning and dodging. Uh, At what point in your retouching do you do any sort of color or maybe even exposure? Or does that happen first in Lightroom before you take it into Photoshop? Um, that can happen first in Lightroom. That can happen in Capture One. But also, uh, after I finish up with burning and dodging, I'll start doing color stuff. Cool. Like making sure that like everything is like uniform or or as it should be. Like as it like neutral tones like. Um, real tones mm -hmm. or like real, like actually looks like it did in reality or I can start playing with like color temperatures and like manipulating the, the image. But this is gonna be all about keeping it like, you know, exactly how it should look like in real life. Exactly. Someone is also bringing up that we talked about salt with cooking. Oh yeah, we got somebody in here from yesterday. That's <laughs> awesome. Talked about cooking yesterday, yeah. Yeah, salt it. Salt it up, slowly. Very slowly. Perfect. So we've done all the skin. We've taken out everything we've wanted. We've done a little first sharpen, which is like the first of, I would say, many for you, which mm -hmm. is very cool. Mm -hmm. And then you go into dodging and burning, which in your mind, you're looking at where you want to bring certain parts out, maybe emphasize some shadows that were already there. Mm -hmm. That's what mostly I'm doing. It's just kind of like shaping the face a little bit. Yeah. And I can already tell, like just toggling it off w once, I'm gonna be like pulling down the opacity because I don't want to like too much. Yeah, because this is really where like burning and dodging can really get like overdone mm -hmm. very quickly. But I do want it to have some shape, and I will attack some of these highlights with 
um, the burn. Okay. And what brush have you chosen? Is it still at 2% yeah, flow? Yeah, 2% flow, and it's probably this soft, super soft, yeah, hardness yep. is down. Nice. And again, that just keeps it super fuzzy. Yeah. Nothing too hard. And I'll do like smaller movements like in here to like even out the shadow and then I'll open it back up and go for like the bigger Oh cool. Moves. And I always do like under the eyes and like eyebrows because like it really defines the face. Under the nose. And then I think you start to appreciate those shadows. Like I love that shadow on the the left side of the frame on his nose. Right here? Yeah, so cool. Yeah, it definitely like helps shape the face. And someone asked what how many lights he used and he said he used one you want used one octa. Yeah. One big octa right at his face and then one up to the ceiling for ambient. Yep. And the the octa was like almost directly overhead but slightly to the right. Hmm. And that's where you get that shadow on the left side. Yeah, that's why this is right here. And Nell says, is he smiling at me? Absolutely. Yes, he is. And his cat, but <laughs> mostly you. And then I'll do some on the arms as well. Again, super subtle. Yeah. But I can't wait to toggle yeah, on and one, off and see I how it looks. I can tell that we're gonna be doing, keeping some of this out. And I'll usually like kind of, because when people stand up, straight like my arms do this a lot it's like you get these like big veins mm -hmm. and they're fine like that's what people look like right but when you're like when it should be about the shirt and somebody's like got some like ripped arms <laughs> bummer like, tray yeah you're like come on <laughs> don't need that. so i'll just like kind of tone them down just a little bit totally and it's just all about like the the shape um because of highlights and shadows mm -hmm. I have friends that do all of their retouching in Dodge and Burn too. Yeah, I mean, you totally can. So you are basically doing that, just attacking each individual issue in different ways too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that blows my mind though. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of work. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it just kind of like depends on the process that you've like been taught or mm -hmm. um, what you're comfortable with. I learned slowly from school and from working for different photographers mm -hmm. um, and just kind of like putting things together on my own. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn down some of the shine on his forehead just a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna do an apply image to get rid of it, or not get rid of it completely, but to manage it just a little bit more. Yeah, and we talked about that the first day. Yeah. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah. I definitely went home and tried it, as you know. <laughs> Not quite sure if I did it right, so. So let's toggle this on and off. So you as you see can that? see, like I've, I've definitely gone too far. As far as I can, as far as I'm concerned, like that's too much. Like it's doesn't look. It looks like too retouched. Yeah. But I also n noticed I missed a spot on his forehead that I want to get first. Ooh. This just a little darker. Zooming in and zooming out is super duper important. Right. So then let's, uh, when you're ready, let's zoom out again and toggle on and off. That's so cool. Look yeah. at that. So I'll pull that down then. I'll probably pull it down to like 75% mm -hmm. or 60%. And then to toggle on and off, it is command, command comma. comma. I'm gonna go even further. He's going even farther, guys. Wow. I'm gonna go even further than that. And this is all just about, because I was like actually pretty heavy handed while I was doing that, I guess. That looks a little bit more. Nice. So that's like down to 50% opacity. Beautiful. From what I was. And that was just because I really like was heavy with my hand. Sometimes it's at 100%, often it's at 100%, but. You're just a little bit lighter. I think, yeah, I guess I was just like going for it right now, you know? <laughs> Do you mind zooming in and just showing that one more time yeah, how subtle it is? Totally. It's still not that subtle. But it's like giving it good shape, There's I think. There's great shape. Yeah. The thing is, is like when I start doing the burn or the dodge, it's gonna make it even more obvious. I'm gonna pull it down a little further. I see. And you have about 34 minutes to submit for your portfolio, so we'll be ready. So I'm gonna dodge. 
Narcissa says, you can do a new layer, fill it with 50% gray, and use dodge and burn on it in a non-destructive way. Yes, you yes, totally you can. Yes, you can, which is basically what, I mean, it's not far from what I've done. Right, he's he's doing the same thing, but a little bit differently. Just slightly differently. Yeah, I've definitely done it like that, too. Uh, now I'm dodging out some stuff, and I'll actually even dodge into the shadows, just to, like, even out some of the, the shadows, like this, this area right here, I burned down, but there are portions of it that could come up a little bit. So I'm dodging them up. And so what are you looking at at this point? You're just looking at the, the shadows and the highlights and yeah. how you want to emphasize? Yeah, and like how the light hits the face and like shaping the light a little bit. Mm -hmm. And just kind of like cleaning up still, like some of the highlights and, and shadows. Tim said that, you know, the other way to do it, which is the 50% gray light, you would have to change your blending mode. Yep. So definitely something to keep in mind is yeah. how awesomely powerful blending modes are. Yeah, powerful, definitely. And there's a million ways to do everything. Mm -hmm. so, and you should try them all. And then see what works for you. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like, I just like kind of, you know, developed over the years, like ways of looking at this. Oh, I think I may have. Okay, there we go. Gone a little too far in that. Mm -hmm. And I like bringing out some of the eyes stuff. Like, I was gonna ask when do you do when do you work on the eyes and yeah, the dodge and, and burn? The dodge and burn usually, and that's I try not to do this too much because this can become super duper obvious if right. you do this like more than than you should. And there are a lot of tutorials on how to go even crazier with oh, what yeah, you do you with that, so definitely. I definitely check that. You can go buck wild with this for sure. Got a lot of proponents of Adobe Camera Raw for all this stuff too. Totally understand. Think it's great. <laughs> yeah. Get into it. Totally. I'm gonna burn in the edges too, just to kind of like give his eyes a little bit more oomph. Can't wait to toggle in and out of this one. Yeah, watch here. Oh, well, that's the burn layer. Oh. But dodge, Ooh. you know, just kind of makes him sparkle a little bit more. He's looking at you even more. Yeah. And it's like pretty subtle. Like if you're not even looking at his eyes, like everything else changes. But if you like focus on his eyes, like just like right in here, mm -hmm. I don't want to go any further than that because you'll start to notice like, oh, that person like really worked on their eyes a lot, <laughs> you know? And it gets like really obvious that it's been like super photoshopped. Right. There's a time and a place. Maybe an X-Men movie poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it's about blazing eyes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just uh, again just gonna go through his arms a little bit and like kind of pull out some of the shadows. Trying not to make him look so ripped. Yeah. <laughs> so again, we're in the dodge layer. Yeah. It looks great. And for e-commerce, it's really just about being really nitpicky and making sure that the skin looks good, the clothes look good, that you have you shot it to a point where it can inform your editing a little bit easier too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's take a peek at this. Just getting there. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights to I mean, mostly, most of the dodging and burning is like accentuating what's already there. Like if, like once you start trying to manipulate things like past a certain point, which you totally can. Mm -hmm. Like movie posters, they like, they shoot movie posters like super flat and they paint in oh, yeah. all of the shadows so they can do whatever they want with those photos. But that's like a whole other thing. Right. You know, that's com compositing basically. Um, but for, for my work, like for shooting portraits and shooting e-com stuff, like I'm just trying to accentuate what's there. Right. So after you've done this, what are your thoughts about next steps? Next step, I'm gonna um, work on exposure mm -hmm. and I'm gonna knock some of these um, highlights down and we're gonna get the back, we're gonna separate from the background and make sure the background's like evenly white. Which is not far, right? Because of the way I shot it, but. Um, and then just as a bird's eye view, you're gonna have multiple of these to edit, 
is how do you make that consistent over multiple e commerce? Yeah, definitely. Images? We can open up the next image and I can show you exactly how, to how do that'll that. happen. Nice. I'm going to close this because I don't need that. Just, you know, some forward thinking. But definitely. I would love to see where this continues to go to. Um, okay, so burn and dodge, pretty done. So I'm noticing that there's just like these like kind of highlights that I want to like manage a little bit mm -hmm. just to knock them down a, just a hair. Right. And some part of your process is actually a lot of taking down of highlights too. Mm -hmm. So your work, you really love to make sure those aren't like crazy. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to do a curve adjustment layer. And I'm going to zoom into his face so I can see what's going on with those highlights. Nice. And they're really not that bad, but I mean, I've definitely managed to pull blown out highlights <laughs> into, uh, into workable images. So I'm really paying attention to like the highlights like right in here. And this one was pretty hot. And like there was a little section right here. Mm -hmm. And so what you've done is created a curves layer and brought those mid-tones. Yeah, like really, really far, far down. down. And then I'm going to go to image, apply image. And these are the presets for knocking down the highlights. Uh, it was merged, multiply. This is invert is unchecked, 100%. And that's going to give you this like really flat image. Let's see before. So you've got before and after. And if you're paying attention to just these highlights, those highlights are in a good spot now. Right. But everything else looks a little weird. So I'm gonna make it a new folder um, by hitting Command G to group it. And I'm gonna name that group Highlights. And on that folder, I'm gonna make a clipping mask and invert it with Command I. So this is back to ground zero. This is the original image. So you've inverted what you've done. Yeah. Perfect. And now I can paint in. The parts that you want to manage. Yeah, the parts that I want to manage. Caps lock. Boom, caps lock. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> Someone's saying, let's use face aware liquify to make his eyes bigger, implying the youthful, assertive behavior we want to see in our customers. Yes. <laughs> well, I think they chose this guy for that, <laughs> but that would definitely be in casting. Oh, although you can for sure do that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, the the, the face aware liquify is pretty magical. It's pretty magical. wild. Yeah. yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with that. You can basically change a person to another person. <laughs> um, so I'm really just like being super duper subtle with this, like just painting in. The highlight the the highlights to be managed and just to re reiterate your your flow is at two percent like it usually is the hardness is all the way at zero uh -huh. but you are at 100 percent opacity so you might yeah. take it back down I probably will if you need to to add in like because like you want to have some like highlights so it shows the shape of the face and light hitting it right um but i just don't want them to be like like super hot N not that these are uh, i just want to i like managing all this stuff like i like having control over it. Right, and then there might be a time and a place where you want the highlights to be oh, yeah. super blown out. For sure. It makes sense sometimes. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to toggle this on and off. Does everyone see that? You can see. Sheesh. Like it definitely That's knocks like them down. That's like instant powder for the face. Yeah. Very nice. Is everyone noticing that? I am. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but I want to dial it back a little bit just so it still looks really natural. Okay. So you're going to take the opacity down? Opacity down. <clears throat> I'm just going to watch it as it goes down. And then I'm going to toggle as well. Command comma. Munir thinks he looks kind of like Steve Stephen Curry. Uh, kind of. Maybe his brother? Who's that? Warriors basketball. Oh. Sports. Yeah, sports. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's fair enough right there. Um, 
He kind of looks like that guy that was in prison and then became a model. <laughs> but like, I don't mean, you know what I'm saying? That, yeah, that the one guy. Prisoner. Trey, you're not, you weren't in jail, I know this, but I mean, I don't, but anyways, it's fine. He made a career out of it. He did, Very didn't proud. He? Um, all right, so next few things is gonna be about managing light, managing exposure. Uh, I'm not gonna really play with color too much on this because we shot it uh, with a you know a color card, a gray card, so that the color that we got was the true color to okay. his skin tones and all of the shirts, like everything was like true to real life. Um, so I'm not gonna like play around with the color temperatures too much. Although in Lightroom, because I shot over the whole day and like sometimes when you're, like the pro photo lights are really super duper consistent. Right. But if you move them, like we had to move like from the backdrop to like a uh, corner mm -hmm. um, and you don't place things like exactly perfectly, sometimes the color temperatures can shift just a little bit. Right. And even if you've used a gray card, so over the whole shoot, you're gonna like manage those and that, that would all happen in Lightroom later. Right. So yeah, my question is if we had to do color temperature, you would do that at this point? No, I would do color temperature do in light, either first or in Lightroom after. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good um, to know. So right off the bat, like I'll probably give this like um, I'll use levels and see where the parameters are. Oh, that's in the wrong spot though. So I'm gonna delete that and because I have, I mean, you have the folder. group. Yeah, so I'm gonna make sure the levels is outside of the group. Boom. So what are you looking at when you? I'm just gonna bring this like slider over so the white is just at the very beginning and you can see it like, mm -hmm. let's toggle. And this is definitely something that I run into where you're shooting a white shirt against a white, a background. white background. Yeah. So if you have any tips and tricks there. Well, the white shirt's definitely like, a. I don't know, like half a stop or like a quarter of a stop brighter mm -hmm. than the background, so it does pop out like the slightest bit. But I am gonna bring the background up a little bit um, to uh, kind of make it just like a little bit more white because right now it's just like a very light gray. Right, and the client might want it to be extremely white. Yeah, I mean, that can be done. I mean, you could do that in camera too um, by managing like you know, uh, the color numbers while you're actually shooting on the background. Nice. Narcissa, I would love for you to explain your question a little bit more. She says, his neck is wider than the neck. Can you, you can see the difference. How can you fix that? I'm, I'm wondering if you mean the shirt or his actual neck? Uh, maybe she means this area right here is uh -huh. like lighter than his face. Oh, okay. That's probably just the light hitting it. I mean, it could go in and dur like burn it down a little bit. But it like kind of gives it a little shape. Right. And he has like a, he definitely has a darker face, but like let's look at that real quick. So we can go bounce back to Good the question. burn layer. And then I'm gonna just kind of like paint in, I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit. It's all about burn and dodge. And I also would say if you feel like his skin there is a different color than the rest, then that would be in the frequency separation layer. Yeah, you Where you can work on the color. that there, yeah. So maybe it's a two-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan said, what if you wanted a different background? Oh, you can definitely blend in all sorts of different backgrounds. And if you shoot on 50% gray, that's the best to blend in any background you want. So if, if I had a gray backdrop, <clears throat> you could just like bring in any pattern, texture, weird other photo and use the blending modes to to blend in, you know, like, I don't know, like a volcano. Wow. Or like a unicorn. Both are great. Mean? Yeah, I do I do know what you mean. <laughs> I love that that was your first place to go. You know, if you like want a volcano or mm -hmm. something. Perfect. Volcanoes are cool. Totally. You can just stay very far away from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's select him out of the background. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a curves adjustment layer so that I can control it really well. And in the clipping mask, the layer mask, I'm going to paint him out. I'm gonna do this like really fast. There's definitely ways where you can do it to get every little nook and cranny around the edges and through here. Mm -hmm. But I find that I just really like it to look um, 
a little bit more natural because light just doesn't fall perfectly like that, especially the way I shot this. Right. So I've but got- But there are many ways to do this. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm on the, um, the clipping mask. I'm gonna change my color from white to black by hitting X. And then uh, I'm gonna actually turn the opacity on my, I mean, sorry, I'm gonna turn the flow up to 100 mm. on my brush by hitting Shift zero zero. Shift zero zero. And I'm gonna paint a little bit right here on his face. And then I'm gonna hit the backslash tool to see the clipping mask. And I'm gonna uh, shrink down my brush and so when you see the clipping mask, you're, you've actually, this is hard to explain, or it kind of is counterintuitive because if I were to do this, I would not have, when, you're, when I have black selected, mm -hmm. I'm actually putting, a, oh wait, no, when I, I'm, rewind. Never mind what I was <laughs> about to say. Yeah. Forget all of that. So I'm gonna paint in what I want to be the clipping mask. Yes, that's what you want to be affected, correct? Yeah, this is what I want. Oh no, this is gonna be what I make not affected. Oh right, because you're on the black yeah, so drip brush layer. Using, exactly. Um, Naren wants to know, how do you maintain the color tone if this is a collection of photos? We definitely will be talking about that. Yeah. Um, that's a huge question to make it consistent for e-commerce. Um, but it really does start at the photo shoot, and you said you used a gray card or a color card mm -hmm. um, to keep it consistent. So I think that's a great, a great start too. And mm -hmm. then we'll talk about the the managing it after. After. Yeah. So he's just painting in what he doesn't want affected. Mm -hmm. And how did you get to the to this view again? I you hit clicked on the layer mask yeah. and you hit backslash. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna spend some time doing this. And there are, like I said, probably better ways to do this than the way I do it, but I've just been doing it this way for like a long time. <laughs> well, we'd love to hear what you guys do, so. Yeah, to, totally, because I know that there are better ways to do this. And quicker ways, probably. Yeah. But I end up, actually don't do this all that often, so I kind of like forget <laughs> and when I do this sort of stuff, like selecting out layers on my own personal work, I usually keep them like pretty soft mm -hmm. on the edges so that things kind of like don't look so cut out. Right. And um, look, they look natural. Like I like, I use them mostly to shape light and like light falling on certain things. So mm -hmm. I want to keep like, um, just the softness to it, I guess. Yeah, and you'll look at some e-commerce and also notice that they'll have the same shot but have to change the shirt. Maybe it's the color, so this is another way of maybe approaching that as well. Mm -hmm. He's all red now. Yeah, sometimes it looks cool. <laughs> Thank you. Someone said I'm a good host. Aw, that's so, so nice. So sweet. Guys, it's our last day. Yeah, last day. I'm sad. I'm sad too. So there's like a few little sections where it's red on the background where I want it to be white. So I'm just going to hit X to select white and paint that stuff in. Right. So it's. Not all is lost. You can go back. Yeah, that's what's so cool about uh, clipping masks, layer masks. So get in there, refine it. Yeah. And, and like I said, you can get as detailed, like you can get super detailed with this if you really, really need to. But I'm just doing this really fast so that we can. Um, so we can see it. Yeah, so we can like get to it. Christina says you're good with the brush. Oh, thanks. I mean, if you're good. Yeah. Do it. If it feels good, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the brush feels good. <laughs> <laughs> you have 14 minutes to submit, by the way. Submit. I'm excited to see. This is portfolios, see. right, that we're submitting? Yeah. Cool. I mean, not me, but. Right. But somebody will. 
All right, this is definitely not perfect, but like pretty close. Let's just pretend it's perfect. Yeah, and like I said, there are definitely ways to do this better than what I just did this. Again, still would love to know what people... Okay, so that's the mask. Red is the mask. I'm gonna hit backslash to not see the what the actual mask is doing now. And now I can adjust just the background layer. Like I can like blow it out super white. Ooh. And you can see where like how like the mask is not so great. Right. But like that's nowhere, ne like I'm never gonna push <laughs> it that far. Um, Andrea says sometimes if it's two similar colors, I have luck turning it to black and white temporarily and messing with the levels so they separate. Yep, totally, yeah, I've sure. seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Quick selection sometimes works, totally Tara. Quick selection, yeah, that's yeah. definitely a good way to do it. That's how I was taught how to do it and just like was stubbornly didn't remember how to do it. <laughs> no, it's definitely great. Yeah, I mean, there are ways that to do this like way easier than the way I do it. So, I, like, I actually like it your way, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, it just like light spills from the backdrop to the subject as well. So I don't want it to like look, sometimes if you use like the, super clean way of doing it. It just looks so cut out. Mm -hmm. Joaquin says he's masking with the brush more and more, never use the pen tool anymore. It's true, I yeah. used to use the pen tool a lot actually. Yeah, 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 definitely. But. So like, as you can see right here, like backgrounds like come up fair amount. And there are oh, a few wow. spots like on his skin that I would like go back and refine mm -hmm. the mask. And that's what's so cool about the clipping masks. Actually, that's like a little bit much, it's a bit aggressive. Um, He's getting real aggressive. Yeah, now. yeah. There's this is so cool about clipping masks is like, you know, if you you can go and and play with it, like his ear needs to come down. Like, I'm just gonna paint that in. There we go. You know, and like you can just kind of like scroll around and like see like different where sections affecting. where you want to have it. But I want to keep the edges of the hair out of the mask. So they like get some of that light bouncing off of the background because that'll make it look more natural because that's how what's happening to begin with. Mm -hmm. Really nice. <laughs> Someone said, I can't remember the last time I used the pen tool. <laughs> yeah, I don't really use it very often either. It must feel great. I'm sure there's like a whole other thing and for like people in Photoshop who aren't editing photos that use it. Totally. See, and I even want to keep that, like this area right here. Mm -hmm. like I mean, that's a good I, edge. But it's like part of the shirt is, right. is getting lighter, but uh -huh. I, I want it, like if I were to like really clean that edge up and have it be perfect, it would look really cut out. Mm -hmm. Like I want some of the light from the background to kind of spill onto the shirt a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Um, Let's see before so, and after. So this is before and after. Woo! Look at that. Yeah. Oh, let's, um, so this is some something that I haven't talked about yet. This may not be the greatest image to talk about it on because there's, there's not much red in his face, but like under his eyes is like a little bit red mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Um, and there's probably like a, some red in his nose, but like if you want to remove redness from somebody's face, like <laughs> The images from yesterday, like my my personal work, where his nose was all red because it was cold outside. And I'm you like, wanted that. I wanted to keep that, but you can get rid of that sort of stuff. And how you would do it would be, like let's just focus on like the redness like in his eye, like under his eyelids right here. Right. Um, you can open the hue and saturation adjustment tool and click into reds. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna throw this like way over, and this one way over here. Done. Image is yeah, done. There, now. We, <laughs> there it is. Great job. And then I am gonna pull the slider to. Re this is actually making a selection right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna pull the slider until it's just affecting the reds that I, or the, the portions of the image that I found to be red that I want to adjust. So just kind of like want to get his eyes. And it's gonna spill onto a whole bunch of other stuff because it's like really searching for those red pixels. So I'll find a spot in here where I feel comfortable with like a selection. And then I'm gonna pull this number back to zero 
I'm gonna pull this number back to zero and I'm gonna push the lightness up. So now we're just affecting those areas, like you can see. Mm. But you can see like under his, like if you push it way up, you can see under his eyes, yep. like right in here and right in here have been affected. And you can see his lips. Obviously there's tons of red in everyone's lips. Yep. And his lips are like totally grayed out. So I'm gonna dial that back down to a portion, to a place where I feel like the eyes look like more blended in with the rest of the skin tone, mm -hmm. which is like probably like right around there. And this is like way better on on skin, like who, like somebody who's got rosacea, like me. Oh. Uh, you can really like, you know, clean someone's skin up like tone-wise with this outside of using frequency separation. Right. Because like getting in there, like doing this with frequency separation would be really tedious. So this is like a bigger blanket. To, yeah, it's like a blanket move. Okay. Tim said you can also reduce the saturation of the reds in camera raw. Yeah, you can do that there too. Perfect. Th this you can like really target. That's what's really cool about this. And what I'm gonna do next too is I'm gonna paint back in his lips. Oh, I see. Because what, when you'll see uh, what it does, it's gonna look a lot more natural. It's gonna blow your mind. Totally blow your mind. <laughs> um, oh my. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that and is... And he's back. Yeah, and he's back. He's less dead now. And like, let's toggle up, like, look at the eyes. And like, the whole face, like, I could probably paint more back in. Like, yeah. let's, let's like, just give him, like, a little bit more tone back into his face. But just avoid the under eye. Absolutely. I want to look at what I'm doing here. So I can just kind of... Real like, beautiful. Yeah, see what's happening. And would you ever do it the opposite where you actually invert the layer and then just paint in where you want it to affect? Yeah, you could do that for sure. Cool. That's just checking, asking for a friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must love mask, yes. Make them lips pop. <laughs> and this so is so much masking all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mask definitely. all the time. Masking masking. All, all day, the time. every yeah. day. Yeah, definitely. I'm masking right now. You yeah. don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of layer masks on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just gonna do his face for right now, just for, oh for the sake of time. Um, but you can see, toggle on and off. Yeah, like just under his eyes, like a little bit of the redness has gone away. And actually, right. I feel like just since he didn't really need this all that much, I'm gonna like pull it down. It's good further. to show. Yeah, but if this was somebody who like really had like red red eyes or like. Um, Rosacea. Rosacea or something like that, yeah, pimples or whatever. You could knock them down with this. I, I did a test shoot with a model who came in with pink eye. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I had to edit out, like, one of her eyes was just, like, red from side to side. Oh, poor thing. Yeah, I had to, it took a little while. So did you do this? or did you? I did this, and I did, like, frequency separation, and I, like, got it, like, pretty close. Uh, thing. The thing about ch like getting red eyes out is like eyes are super like there's so many tones going on in the eyes to make them look like spheres and make them look like reflective mm -hmm. and like natural. That was a, a lot of work. It took a long time and it was just one eye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It turned out to be a great shoot though. <laughs> <laughs> I now I want to see it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, so. Five minutes till we get to look at portfolios. Oh, cool. I know, right? So this is like is in a good spot. Like it's pretty cleaned up. Like let's look at it from um, the ground up, like what we've done. Uh, you know, it's like a lot more polished up. It's like, there's nothing distracting. It's all about, you know, like it, pulling out all the details from his face and lightening the background and lightening up the whole image makes you kind of look at the shirt. I mean, obviously they hired this bottle to model these shirts because he has a certain look, so like he's gonna be involved. But I have seen a lot of e-com where, you know, they crop in like this. And it's like literally just like, uh, not even about the person, or they like crop in like even further like that. Hmm. And it's just about the shirt. Right, and then you go, oh no, I edited his whole face. Yeah. Um. So the last step, I'm just gonna do a final sharpen. The and final sharpen. The final sharpen. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see it kind of the, does a different sharpen than the first sharpen I did. Which is? 
Unsharp, Unsharp mask, mask was first. And this is a high pass filter, which mm -hmm. we went over um, in the last few sessions. So do your homework, so, go yeah. back, watch, watch that. Watch it. Um, obviously, this is like way too sharp. And you can see there's like haloing going around where the there's like a lot of contrast, like even around the shoulders and whatnot. And yeah. his face is like super crunched out. So I'm gonna dial that way down. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring this down to like. Just bring it down. Like under ten, because it's like. Too much. Yeah, you, you know, I want it to be like just the tiniest bit more sharp. Mm -hmm. And you can see like. You see that it guy? Just kind of like brings it. Like He's snap, back. It's a little snappiness. It's Let's perfect. go like way in. Like, see how that? I mean, it really brings it together. I think, and that is. 10% on the high pass filter sharpening. Wow. Yeah. Not that much. No. So. But just enough. Yeah. Um, I would, the next step would be like working on the next image. Mm -hmm. um, so like, since I had already worked this up at one point in time, I'm not gonna save it, but I would save it. And then I would go back into Lightroom. Mm -hmm. And then I would like, you know, check out this one, mm -hmm. and then I'd be like, oh, this is the next one. Okay. That's the next one to work on. That's the next one to work on. So in the next three minutes, do you want to chat about maybe how to just look at it from a consistency yeah. perspective? Yeah, that's actually what I was just about to start talking about, because I, as you can see in Lightroom, I have adjusted this one, this one to match this one right. a little bit, because the color temperatures, let's just like set this back to zero. I think that's everything. Zero You're just too good of a photographer that it doesn't look that much different. <laughs> so. Yeah. Here, well, let's toggle. Let's go back and forth. Like you can see this one. Now you can see it though. This one's cooler. Yes. That and is this correct. is just like later on in the shoot. You know. Mm -hmm. Like, the lights were sh had been firing for like maybe two hours, and um, they the, at this point the lights hadn't moved. Really? But yeah, and we were like, you know, consistently doing color cards for each shirt. Wow. But the color temperature changed slightly. So I want to make sure that this whole shoot, all the color temperatures are like, you know, fairly, or they're the same. Yeah. Um, so I would adjust this back. So this one looks like, I like the way this looks. Mm -hmm. um, and you could go either way. Like this one looks pretty cool too. And you could like make this one look like that one. Um, let's just compare them side by side real quick. And to do that, you press? C. I'm gonna select both of these guys. So today, C. And then hit C. Today's letter C is brought to you by the letter, letter C. C. Yeah. Compare. So yeah, you can see this guy's, this one's got a little bit more magenta in it. And it's a little warmer. I really want that shirt this on one. the right. You win some, you dim some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Did they give you one? Uh, uh, they offered to give me one, but I forgot to grab one before the shoot was done. Oh my gosh. You are the worst. I know. Okay, so <clears throat> this guy needs to come down in color, or temperature a little bit. Like, he needs to be a little cooler. So all you're doing is just looking at the differences and how you can make them as similar as possible. Because it is true, uh, even the nicest lights will have some discrepancy. Yeah. So. And also like your eyes just become tuned to this and the more you work it. Yeah. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. We have 20 seconds till okay. portfolio submission. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And like that's pretty close. It is. <clears throat> I mean, I would keep working it. But you like, win some, you clone some, you RB, RGB some, you mm -hmm. CMYK some. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's three seconds. Okay, are we ready to do this? Yeah, it's time for some portfolio submissions.
computer blasting off. It is blasting off right now. See? We are in the space station and we are here to review your work. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Gets hot in there. I hope they wash these. I don't know how astronauts do it. You don't know how? How could you be in this thing? Well, they don't wear it inside. You mean they don't wear these? Inside the space station? Clearly know a lot about space. I'd wear it all the time if I was an astronaut. I guess I would too. Well, this, I'll figure out how long I want to wear this. Probably the whole time. Yeah. Please screenshot this and send it to us, <laughs> actually. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna check out a couple of portfolios. I'm gonna let, um, I'm gonna let you talk about these a lot more than me, but because this is, you're my guest mm. and I'm the host. Mm. Are those soundproof? Let's try. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. No. I don't, I think they're like, you can hear through it. Okay. Let's chat. Let's chat. Ooh, I like this. this is Poppy. Poppy work. This is our friend from Uganda. Whoa, cool. Photographer and motivational speaker. You have my dream job. Oh, wow. Is that your dream job? I would love to be a motivational speaker. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Guys, you can be whoever you want to be. <laughs> is that okay? Is that good? Um, okay, cool. Let's check this out. Let's chat. I love the colors. I like how poppy it is. It's like the colors work really well to, with each other. I like the like graphic n nature of it. Like it's, It looks like design. It does look like design. Uh, and I like just like the light, like the poppy light. I can also see that you're looking at using similar colors across your work, so that's cool. Yeah, definitely a good idea. Look at the retouching on the face. We've got some good highlights. Mm -hmm. Definitely retouched. Love it. Love the colors. I've got one piece of uh, feedback. Hmm. I would probably work out this part. Yeah, actually, I was thinking that too. It's really hard to steam clothing, I've noticed. Yeah, and that's just like, that piece would look better if it was just the same color as the rest of the dress. Right. Or just not as wrinkly. But everything yeah. else looks on point. I think my my initial, oh, look, oh here we go. Yeah, Hello. there's more, more to this. Look at this, wow. How do I get that in Is there? that in her, yeah, it's like, uh, has that been like, did you do this after, or is that actually her awesome hair? I have questions. I would I would dial back the softening of the skin a little bit. Mm -hmm. Colors are cool. Yeah, it all looks all the skin looks like it's really smoothed out, and it looks like the there's this little, the background's been like selected out too. Yeah. Am I wrong about that? Let me look at it over here, like around here. Oh yeah. I would love to know if you change the colors a mm -hmm. lot in selecting the background. It reminds me of like a David LaChapelle. Oh image, man. What's which that is just like too? super bright, super poppy, and like really like glamorous. Yeah. Really nice. Let's go into this one African Beauty. We've got similar color palette, We've got really colorful everything. Whoa, that's a tire. Yeah, cool. Super cool. Yeah, it's like a basket and a tire. Is Look there more to this eyes. image? I think there's multiple okay, images. Okay, there's more images. I like the blue gel on the right side, or yeah. left side, sorry. Her right, our left. I love, you love gels. You're I do right. like getting into gels, yeah. Yeah. I dig into gels. You can dig into it. Yeah. I like to use them to like make a time of day or like a whole atmosphere. Mm. This is just like a surreal place. Yeah, I like this pose and this whole like composition, like the the tire and the basket on top make a cool, like it all like brings you to her face. Right. Something, I again, we've been talking about being nitpicky. I'd probably maybe check out this basket and maybe take that, oh, that's yeah. a little distracting yeah, to me. Yeah. Just being nitpicky. Mm -hmm. And then maybe this one eyelash that's gonna poke her in the eye later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause that happens to me all the time. Yeah, definitely. All the time. 
Such a strong pose though. Yeah, definitely. And like, is she wearing something or is this glittery skin? That's so cool. Yeah, it looks like they painted it on. Or maybe that's posts. I'd love to know. Maybe it's photoshopped in. Yeah. Really cool. Wow. The colors are amazing, Brianne. Yeah, they're very vibrant. This is the Joker girl. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> she truly is, though. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, the outfit's on point. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same. You know, it's like, for me, I would dial down the smoothing of the skin a little bit and mm -hmm. just make it a, a little bit more real because it's already a surreal scene. She's already playing a character. Sometimes I find if the skin's like over smooth, mm -hmm. it looks a little like plastic. It kind of loses a little bit of life. Um, and that's just my opinion, obviously. Totally. But, but also there's some great texture that is maybe you could see a little bit better with the makeup if we maybe dialed it back a little bit. Like, I yeah, want to see definitely. this texture. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm starting to see it here. That's really cool. Uh-huh. And Nell said, I want to know what she was thinking. She's thinking about being the Joker. <laughs> That's crazy. This background's insane, too. Yeah. But I see your point of view. I see what you're thinking about and the colors and how graphic it is and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of design elements in it. Like it brings your eye around. Yeah. I think that the two on the left are strong, are stronger than the Joker one because the two on the left work with design and color. The Joker one does work with color a bit, but because I see the two with design, like so heavy design elements and they're so graphic, it kind of makes me want to see more of that. Yeah. Like I want to see that. Like I think that the two um, on the left show these women as like, they're like powerful women who are like very confident. And then there's like this other shoot. Well, maybe that was just a different shoot and a completely different concept, but it's like, like this character, this fun character. And it doesn't have the same sort of like stylistic choices that the other two have. Yeah. And I think it's also representative of where you're living, which I think is really cool to bring out mm -hmm. in photography as well. Yeah, I would like to see even more of that too, because yeah. you're definitely in a cool part of the world that you could bring in elements that I mean, we don't see that a lot here with photos, like, pull that in. I mean, and we're then, in space, like, so we know go, nothing. Yeah, go go even further <laughs> Guys, with that. we're it's in like space. on something. Totally. I would love to see more. Mm -hmm. So add more to your Behance. I want to see it. Um, you ready to move on? Yeah. Cool. Let's look at Emmanuel's. Ooh. Hello, Geneva. You've got a lot of work. Oh, wait. Hold on one second. What's this? Okay. Yeah, work. Great. Let's look at your work. You've got a lot of work. It looks like it does a ton of different stuff. Yeah. Or is this all photos and it's also like how they're used in, are they a graphic designer as well? Yeah. It or is like, it just graphic design? It looks like Emmanuel is pas has passion for digital communications, design, UX and UI, web design, fashion, and music. Okay. I have a feeling that he's working with these images in a graphic design aspect. Okay. Which is very cool. Yeah. Something I would love to know more about. Mm-hmm. What, let's, let's dig into here. This is retouching actually. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. So this is showing his retouching. What? Before oh yeah, we got after. some liquify. <laughs> yeah, we got some face, uh, face adapt liquify. Hey. Very intense, very, I see some high pass going on. Mm -hmm. Super sharpened. Yeah, look at, look at the hair right here. Mm -hmm. I love a brushed up eyebrow. It does look good. <sighs> Skin texture's there though, I mm -hmm. like that. Skin texture looks nice. She's got some cool shine. Yeah. The, what do you call that, decollete? Uh, don't worry about it. it. I don't know. So same image here.
Just like you do with black and white. Yeah, always checking black and white. What do you think? What are your thoughts on which one is uh, more successful? I like the black and white a lot. I do too. Yeah. I just think this kind of lighting is so perfect for black and white. Yeah, definitely. That's great black and white light. Would you do anything different in terms of uh, maybe bringing out highlights or shadows? I mean, I personally, I would turn turn down the sharpening a bit mm -hmm. um, just to make it feel a little bit more natural. But I feel like the like the highlights and like the burning and dodging all look great. Yeah. Like the skin cleanup is really good. Um, yeah, the only thing that I would say would be like turning down the sharpening just a little bit. But that's like my personal preference as well. Yeah. Ryan's wondering if it's for fitness and showing perspiration. She does look shiny, but that's kind of a cool look sometimes. Oh, it's a it's great like, look. Yeah, dewy. We like to say dewy <laughs> in the photography world. Ooh, she looks like she's going to kick your butt. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it looks like it might be it could athletic. Could be athletic. Yeah. yeah. She's wearing some cool workout top. I mean, the thing that I'm noticing is that it's very consistent. Yeah, it is for sure. So. Let's see what else he's got. He had some, or what, sorry, was this a? Let's go, let's go, let's go out. Digital yeah, retro yeah. design, modern digital retro. So he's explaining how he did it. Oh, I like this a lot. So this is taking an image to a, like a very extreme. different place. Yeah, I really dig that. Look at that. It's a cool image. Even to start showing with how too. you did it. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. I even love this original image. Yeah, honestly. it's great. I think that's why if you take if you're gonna take an image and push it to the extreme like that, you got to start with something good to yeah. begin with. So let's see what he's what he's up to. We've got a channel mixer, color fills. My word. Put it in a background. Look at all this fun stuff. Yeah, I like this a lot. Really? This is pretty cool. Wow. And you can do that. You can take a photo that you've taken. You could take this photo that you took yeah, and, and do something like this. Yeah. It really helps inform some graphic design elements. Yeah, this looks like something he's been working on for a while, too. Like, he's kind of got a process down. Yeah, I appreciate seeing this process, too. Ooh, that's cool. Hello. Oh, we got a little tutorial here. What? Yeah, there we go. Way to go. See, is that a hue and saturation layer, or what is that? I can't read that from here. Channel mixer. Ah, channel mixer, yeah. Yeah. What are the other layers? Got some color fills. Some yeah, text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't use Channel Mixer all that much. I'm I'm curious about it. Oh, it's definitely good for stuff like this. I mean, look at that. Yeah. That's an album cover. Yeah, definitely. Wow. That's really cool. I'm loving it. I'm loving your color choices, too. Let's see what else is going on here. Got a lot of different varied work. This is kind of more of the documentary type stuff. Mm. Wow, I wonder how you, did you make it look like this? <gasps> oh, cool. What? That's a clever idea. Yes, shopping it into real scenes. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Yeah. That's gotta be some gnarly blending modes. Yeah, definitely. That's cool. Way to go. Yeah, this is well done. Super well done. What? How you do that? Very cool. Let's look at a few more. Emmanuel, you're amazing. Oh, this is nice. How to create a look and feel for editorials. Nice. Cool. I'm interested. Ooh. This is an article that he wrote? No. Or is it just designed? I think this is designed. Feel free to chime in too if you're, if you're watching. But this is cool. I'm, it's definitely leading my eye with the images and the text. Mm -hmm. Make reading enjoyable. Yes, I agree. Whoa. Cool photo. Hello, Calvin Klein. That's a cool photo. That's great. Yeah, this is well laid out. Look at these. Yeah, nice. Yes, please. Narcissa says, very nice profile. Yes. And Nell says, I am sold. I agree. Whoa. 
You've done a lot of work. Yeah, this is good stuff. It's really great. You want to look at some more photo related type stuff? Yeah, let's keep moving on. What do you think? I thought this was really well done. Yeah. There's a lot of good work up. There's even Graphic more. design is strong. And that, I really loved it, like, um, the that image, like, the super colorful image that was mm -hmm. pushed. Yeah, I would actually love to see you do more of that. Yeah. That feels really nice. I just want to see what this might have been. This is a little update. This is great. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool photo. That's a great photo. Yes, this is showing, like, a magazine update. Beautiful. Love her. Wonderful. Okay, do you want to pick one more to look at? Uh, one more of the projects, or yeah. the, or isn't there a third portfolio? Are we doing th just two portfolios? Just two. Oh, okay. Um, let's look at. Keep scrolling up. Oh. We already looked at. Uh, what about what about um, this one? Okay. Maybe just design. Ooh. Oh, cool. This just gets us I like excited. that. I like, I'm, I did, I studied graphic design for a little while. Or not a little while, I studied graphic design in school and I really liked it. But I found photography to be more rewarding for myself. So you know how to do this stuff? Not that, but this stuff, yeah. Wow. Emmanuel, yeah, you're amazing. I always loved it, and especially when it's done well and this looks really cool. Right, and you can use very similar tools just to, in Photoshop, to do what you did, like sharpening and all the stuff we use today. So, mm -hmm. way to go. That's great. Love your work. Super cool. All right, how are we on time? It's got a few more minutes. 47. Yeah. Should we dive back in? Let's just finish this up real quick. Thanks Shall for we? sharing, everybody. Yay. I'm gonna take this off now. We're not in space <sighs> anymore. <sighs> I'm home. Ready to eat a burger. After all that space. Okay, cool. So we've got about five more minutes to wrap this up, but we took you through one e-commerce image that is part of multiples. So yeah. it's a lot of fun work that you have to do to make it all consistent. But yeah, and that's the next step is like making it all consistent too. Yeah. Um, so like we were doing here, like adjusting the color temperature. Like, they look closer now. I mean, I would keep working on it, but uh, I want to start looking at, like, um, what else might be a thought. Oh, he's in space. Yeah. So, like, this one looks like, to me, it, he may have gotten, like, he was, like, a little closer to the light. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he, like, wasn't quite on the mark. Right. Because this image looks like uh, slightly less exposed than that one, just right. in terms of like skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, so I could bring this one up a little bit and I would use just a little bit of the exposure. Oops, going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Exposure and then like bring up the highlights just a little bit. And this one's like a, f a file I already worked on as well. Right. So this is like assuming that these are all like you've already worked on everything, mm -hmm. and you're looking at Lightroom, and you're like gonna, you know, polish it all off. So then I would like toggle back and forth. Maybe we do a little, little compare. Yeah, we could do a compare. My favorite, my favorite new thing. Let's just see, guys. It's great. It's getting closer. I yes, final would... chance to ask your burning questions. Yeah. And then I you will never see us again. Dial this down just a bit. Let's go down like here and bring the highlights down just a little bit. And then so again, look. this is just like being nitpicky at the end, making sure it looks perfect for your client so that they could just upload it and be ready to go. Yeah, like if these two images are side by side each other on a website, like I don't, it's gotta look like it's seamless. Right. Um, so the Exposure looks like closer now. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm going too far. You've gone too far. Boom. Like those look closer. And then I'm gonna just keep going. Like, I like, I think these look like pretty close with each other. 
Um, Very nice. And then there was this, the difference, like, the other girl, like, two different people, making them all look like yeah. they're, like, you know, from the same shoot. And I think they actually, like, you know, it looks pretty good. Have I changed anything here? And just remind me, this no. was, oh, was she part of that other company and then you had to merge the images together? She was the same company. So the other shoot, the next day, was this one. And this is natural light. So this is like very different. And I actually didn't, like, when when I delivered these images, like, it was two different shoots. Okay. And they did, they blended it together uh, afterwards. I would actually just love to look at the difference between natural light and your studio shot for this. Company. Let's compare. You can see the shadows fall in a different place. Yeah. The, the shot, the, it affects the skin like very differently. It's such a different look. Yeah. Um, the light's coming from a different direction. Uh, I've also like burned and dodged this differently. Like mm -hmm. I burned and dodged like down this whole side and down this so whole side. Yeah, I did set up white V flats on this side. Like you can see in one of these see. like more lifestyle -y photos. Like, oh, you can see the V flat. This was the hey. set. So nice. this was just the natural light set. It's just like him sitting in a chair, white V flats up next to him, and um, this one was more light everywhere. Right. There's probably white B-flats on both sides. We've got a question. Isn't it best to work on Lightroom first and go to Photoshop so the colors remain the same? Um, you've really talked about your workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop, so he, yeah. you start in Lightroom. S yeah, definitely. I mean, it all comes into Lightroom and you can manage stuff in Lightroom. I tend to do, make everything look the same as I'm in Photoshop, I try to get it like pretty close. And then I do just like final, like small adjustments in Lightroom. And it was like we were doing yesterday. This is a great example of what we were doing yesterday. Like let's open up both of these yeah. in Photoshop. So I'm gonna open up originals and it might not, sometimes it doesn't open up both. Um, let's see what it's gonna do. Oh, we already have this guy open. It's still too sexy for his cat. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and open up. Like, let's just open up this person. Oop. Fresh face. It's doing something. Hello. I wonder which one it's gonna open. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, okay, cool. Perfect. Oh, look, I have noise on these. I don't, even, I don't want that. Don't need noise on these for the e-com stuff. <laughs> um, these are a little, little different. But, um, Should we do a little two-up? Yeah, so we went over the hotkey yesterday that I created to mm -hmm. do the two-up. Uh, shift, command, one. And now we can see them both. Yeah, and you can see they're pretty different. Uh, but because I worked this one up today and I worked this one up a while ago, if I was working them all up, I would just be pulling these layers onto this one. So let's do that real quick. Let's get rid of. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do get rid of any of the burn and right. dodge stuff or the color or the cleanup. But I'm just gonna select these uh, layers. And, and just show how you bring get it over. rid of them. And you can see I have the same setup for everything else. Mm -hmm. And then over here, this is kind of fun too because if I know that I'm gonna knock down like the or or like. Um, like knock down color for the hue and saturation mm -hmm. on his eyes in every photo. I can even pull over the layer masks so I don't even have to do a new layer mask every single time. So right. like, so that's super helpful. Yeah, let's bring over these three layers and I'm just gonna hold shift and like dump them onto here. And you can see where the layer masks are. Right. And it's all screwed up. Aww. But now I can go in and check it out. And then just that's it. a shot in of itself. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. But you know what? We have to say goodbye. Can you believe it? Oh, it's already time. I know. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's a great way to, uh, you know. So we're available for birthday parties, <laughs> yeah. bar mitzvahs. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We've got another segment coming up in just a few minutes with Sasha and Paul. And thanks for having us. It was a great week. Yay. Yay. Bye. Thank you.